desert. Today, we're gonna talk about electricity. Specifically, we're gonna talk about how I get power in the van so I can boondock off the grid like I'm doing now. Without going into too much detail, I'll show you how I set up my electrical system. But if you need to see something written down, I'll link a guy named Ray Fung. His blog is where I got most everything that I did on my setup. That'll be in the description. Yeah. Got hops, what can I say? <laughs> That's so cheesy. Um, okay, so I got these two Renogy solar panels. Um, they're each 150 watts, so that produces 300 watts. Some people stick panels onto the roof with double-sided, really strong industrial 3M tape. What I ended up doing was uh, drilling holes into my roof because I wanted something that was just like guaranteed to not get ripped off by the wind. And I used these expandable washers that fill it in so I wouldn't have to worry about leaking. And just to be doubly secure, I used lap sealant around the edges. So there's a positive and negative uh, wire that comes from these solar panels. And to get them to go inside of my van, I used what's called a through-hole cover. It's basically what uh, they use on sailboats when they wanna bring lines and power inside. These things tighten down and seal around the wires, and then it goes in like an L, and I have a, a larger hole I drilled out. So I stuck the through-hole cover down with really strong 3M tape and then used the lap sealant um, just as an extra precaution. Most everything that I got for my electrical system, I purchased on Amazon. So I'll link those in the description. Uh, there'll be affiliate links, assuming I haven't been booted from the program yet because no one's been using them. Uh, but basically, if you use them, it helps me out a little bit. So I'm gonna link those um, for everything that I have. <sighs> I'm gonna take the easy way down. Okay, so my solar panels enter the van here and travel down back to about here and then they connect to my solar controller. This is my solar controller. It controls how much power to charge the battery. So it's getting a read in voltage from the battery and deciding how much it needs until it's full. So if the battery's really low, it's gonna boost and take as much power as it can from the panels. But if the battery's near um, topped off, it's just gonna trickle charge it and just let a little bit through. There's positive and negative wires coming down from the solar panel. And then there's positive and negative wires coming up from my battery, which is stored underneath my bed. behind that door. Now I know this looks all sorts of terrifying, but I guarantee there's a method to this madness. Let's break it down. So the positive uh, line from the controller comes down and goes through this 30 amp fuse and then travels down and attaches to the positive terminal on the battery. The negative wire is coming down through here and nothing really special except for it attaches it to the negative terminal. The battery itself is a 200 amp hour AGM battery and it's completely sealed so there's no maintenance. You can mount them uh, basically any way but upside down. Fortunately, I don't have to go back there too often because if you do this all right then you hopefully won't have to mess with it. The solar panels are a great way to get power if you're in a sunny place and you're not gonna be driving a lot. The other 
good place for power is from your van itself. More specifically, from your alternator. To connect your house batteries to your alternator, you need to run a cable uh, from the power distribution center, which on the T1N Sprinter is just in front of the battery. You remove this cover. And I used a 125 amp fuse to connect my uh, thick battery cable, which runs through the engine compartment into the cabin. It drops down and I ran it under this floor mat, then back through here. Eventually it goes behind the cabinets in breaks this wall and it goes through this ACR in the top right corner. The ACR either combines or separates the house battery and the, the van battery. How it does that is it recognizes if the van's above a certain amount of volts, um, then it'll allow it this battery to draw power from the front. That cable then goes down and it goes through this 125 amp fuse and connects to the uh, positive terminal of the battery and charges the battery while I'm driving. This switch panel controls everything that's on the 12 volt system. So the water pump, fan, and the three different sets of lights that I have. All of the wires travel through a hole in the platform of the bed um, and enter my battery compartment where the negative wires attach to a ground bus bar that is then attached to the frame of the van. One more thing worth mentioning is my, uh, this is a thousand watt um, pure sign inverter that surges up to 2000 watts. And anytime I wanna charge anything that needs to be plugged in, just flip that on and plug it in. The positive and negative wires from the inverter attach to the positive and negative terminals on the battery. The refrigerator is attached directly to the battery with a separate switch that has a built-in fuse. If you're a visual learner like me, I hope you found that video helpful. There's a lot more details that go into an electrical system. Uh, for that, I'd recommend checking out Ray's build out. It'll be linked in the description. Also, this can get kind of expensive, so I would definitely shop around and see if there's anything you can find used. I found my ACR for half the price, uh, as well as my refrigerator. My solar panels, I save a lot of money on by getting an open box item. So, take that into consideration. Again, everything's going to be linked in the description as far as what I used. Let me know what you thought with either a like or a dislike, and if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comment section. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.